Welcome to another episode of What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. What's Working is the show designed to reveal the trends shaping the workplace and the workforce and business today. Bring the trends into your car or wherever it is that you are in such a way that you can understand them and utilize them to build your own business, to make yourself, your team, whatever it may be, just a little bit more successful. You can't be in business today, I don't think, and not be familiar with the phenomenon known as the TED Talk. TED Talks are a big deal these days, and they have been for a while. Many of the people that are featured on these TED Talks were somewhat unknown. They had a unique, uh, distinct expertise, but they were somewhat, they weren't exactly famous, I would say, until their TED Talk. And suddenly their TED Talks caught on and they exploded in popularity with videos online being watched in the tens of millions of times. These people perhaps uh, were known within their expertise, but suddenly became known to the population in general. And the, the, the fame that they got is remarkable. And as a guy that has, uh, that's in the speaking business from time to time myself, the fees that they began demanding as a result of their TED Talks is unbelievable. I mean, these people were uh, not known, hardly known, and suddenly, nearly seemingly overnight, they were now commanding thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 for a one-hour speech because of the success of the TED Talk. I remember when TED Talks first came into my world and I was asked to take my topic into a TED Talk type of format and I was really really reluctant to do so. I didn't I felt like my 1 hour presentation couldn't be carved down to 20 minutes, which if I recall is the correct amount of time for a TED Talk. It it would bastardize the presentation to bring it into 20 minutes from its hour. Nevertheless, the marketplace at that time was demanding what they were calling TED-style talks. They couldn't call them TED Talks unless they were sponsored by the TED organization, whatever that may be. And I was reluctant. And I did a bad job, quite frankly, trying to boil my material down into 20 minutes. And I I resented it. I did it because I had to. That's what I needed to do. But I didn't do a good job. And I remember thinking it would be nice to get a TED-style talk invitation at a TED organization versus all these independent organizations, conferences, and associations who wanted their speakers to now do TED-style talks. Our guest today has coached a number of TED Talk speakers. He has some, let's say he's got a formula for making the TED Talk a successful uh, entree for an expert into the TED uh, world, the TED Talk world. And when we get him on the phone here in just a minute, he's going to teach us about what it takes to deliver a TED Talk. What is the mastery needed to deliver an effective TED Talk? Is it expression? Is it the way you use audiovisual aids or the way you deliver content without using audio video, uh, uh, AV aids? And I'm really curious if any of these TED Talk ideas are transferring into our new Zoom world. As we're staring into that camera on Zoom, is there anything that we can learn from a TED Talk coach about how you and I deliver content via Zoom? All good questions. This TED Talk phenomenon is about to be revealed when we get back from break. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. my family, Turn to the Experts is more than a tagline. It's a promise. Every key technician is an experienced AC professional, and that saves you money. Speaking of money, how about 0% financing for up to 60 months on installations of new carrier systems? Keith and Carrier, Turn to the Experts. Mobile's leading name and comfort since 1964. License number 83731. The best, most cost-efficient ways to talk to customers about who you are and what you do is through signs, simple, effective signs. Hi, I'm Kim Marston, host of What's Working. 
Signorama is the Mobile area's leader in helping you design and build signs advertising your business. What kinds? All kinds of signs. All kinds. Find Signorama on Facebook or at signorama-mobile.com. Think about how people really see you. The kid at the drive-thru just sees a coffee drinker. Please pull forward. Your local barista sees the person who loves a smiley face in their latte. See you next time. It's kind of the same way with insurance. Other insurance companies just see a customer. But a State Farm agent sees more. They see you as a neighbor. Your State Farm agent is here to get to know who you really are so they can help life go right. Call me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, and Mobile at 666-1616. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston, and I'm on the line with Devin D. Marks. He's the nation's leading TED-style speaking coach. He's called the TED Talk Whisperer by thought leaders and media outlets. His clients, spread worthy ideas, are cataclytic, which I love that word, Devin, uh, with uh, hundreds of millions of viewers worldwide. Devin, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to What's Working. Well, thank you, Cam. It's a pleasure to get to know you and your audience. Yeah, I think that there's very few people these days, in my opinion, that aren't aware of what a TED Talk is. They're, they, they get forwarded. I think there are hotel rooms back when we used to spend time in hotel rooms that features a TED oh, right. channel. There's all kinds of recognition for TED Talks. But for those that may not be aware of what they are, what is a TED Talk? Well, incredibly, a TED Talk is a lecture. Now, now, why are lectures so catalytic and popular in the TED form? A number of reasons, one of which is they're extremely short. Yeah. And these TED Talks originally focused, TED is an acronym, uh, not a person, but TED, Technology, Entertainment, Design. These 18-minute TED Talks were so short and story-driven that you could watch them on your cigarette break or on your coffee break. And then because they were on YouTube, forward them to a friend. The consequence is that TED Talks have now been viewed by many, many billions around the world. And that's B E Illions. Yeah. Which is just mind numbing. Again, we're talking about lectures in right. pre-2005. A lecture at best, as you know, as a public speaker, you might have a thousand people in the room and that was a huge uh, win. Right. Now that's a really poor performing TED or TEDx talk. No, you're right. You're right. Now tell me why a TED talk began and why the 18 minutes? Well, you know, um, there's a 30 year tradition of TED talks. First, it was a pay uh, to attend conference. And for a, a couple of decades, it ran that way. Invitation only in Silicon Valley, again, focused on technology, entertainment, design. And the founder of that conference wanted short and tight messages. So 18 minutes is kind of what he struck on it. Actually, it was about 20, 21 minutes. And the length of TED Talks have shrunk considerably since then. And then a entrepreneur purchased the for-profit conference, TED, turned it into a nonprofit, and began introducing to the wider world TED as we know it, TED.com, it's important to uh, differentiate uh, two descriptors. So there's TED Talks, and you can find those on TED.com, and that's 3,000 of the most polished, refined, perfected uh, ideas worth spreading is the tagline. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but TED Talks should not be confused entirely with TEDx Talks, and TEDx events happen worldwide as well. There were 3,000 TEDx events in 2019 around the world, and they generate TED Talks, if you will, if you could see my air quotes. But again, it's baseball is watching the New York Yankees play the Boston Red Sox, but it's also uh, the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to think of TEDx, the minors, and TED. The majors. So do, let's let's continue with the baseball uh, analogy. Do TEDx uh, speakers get brought up to the majors? They do. And it is uh, increasingly a great thing to see. But here it's also extremely rare. Oh, um, is it? In fact, 
back when I started, the the percentage was something less than one percent of one percent of TEDx talks jumped to the majors. So it's extremely exceptional. Um, now I think they've massaged those numbers and a number of tweaks in New York City at, at TED <laughs> headquarters has bounced those numbers up to five to seven percent is the latest I heard. Again, though, um, a TEDx talk is a huge career milestone for anyone, number one. Number two, huge and beyond is that TEDx talk being jumped to the majors. Oh, I see. I see. Just a rare feat. It's go. It's like walking off the high school baseball field and stepping onto Yankee Stadium in, in the starting lineup. Very true. But let's continue that baseball analogy further than I ever have. I have some ex-girlfriends <laughs> who are chuckling right now. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's put that Tedster on home plate swinging for the fences and he strikes out. He's huh. still a major ball player. Yeah. And that can be what a Ted X or even a Ted speaker does when they go up to bat and their talk views are in the tens of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. As well, opposed to the hundreds of thousands, the millions or the tens of millions. You know, I, I it's a, as a, as a speaker myself, and I said this in the opening comments, I was a little bit offended when I was, when I, the requests came to me at events that said, Cam, we want you here. We want you at the event. We want your content, but we want it as a Ted style talk. And I remember thinking, you can't take my stuff and boil, <laughs> and boil it down to 20 minutes. I've already got the magic. This tw this These Ted talks are for people who can't fill an hour. I've got more than I can put into an hour. However, I think my reasoning was wrong. Can you comment on that? I I can. And, you know, let's just go back to the history of oration and public speaking. And we can go back a thousand years, a hundred years or 20 years. And we see a pattern. Yeah. What used to take three hours in the time of Socrates now um, in the time of my grandfather took uh, 40 minutes to an hour. And then in the you, you come forward and, you know, 40 minutes to 30 minutes is a keynote or a motivational speech. Why? Because we think in hours and we think in Q&A. We need 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. But our attention spans need to be recycled. And large events rarely think that way. Ted knows that our attention span cycles on a 7 to 10 minute increment the research shows and so if you're in an hour-long main stage presentation going 40 minutes non-stop you've probably lost more of your audience than you know yeah well other people maybe not me <laughs> the other <laughs> the other reality is and abraham lincoln and others have said this yes you know, i think um, i know what you're I can gonna stand say up yeah give me give me uh 20 minutes and i can stand up and deliver an hour and a half uh but ask me to do 20 minutes and it'll take days yes. to refine and condense and discipline that content. Yes, I, I know of what you speak. I've uh, one of the other things that I do is do commentaries on uh, another station here in town on public radio, three minute commentaries. And it takes a long time to get it down to three minutes. They're always over three minutes. And that's the that's the work that I do is to take the idea and capture it within three minutes because they always start in, you know, well over 500 words and I need them down to 500. But let's talk about uh, when you work with somebody. So I, I think there's a story here that I definitely want to touch on, which is when did you know you kind of understood the secret sauce to that 20 minutes and were able to begin helping people refine their delivery? Well, like anything in life, there's a, you know, beginning, middle and end story that we could um, pop out in 20 <laughs> seconds. But in, in deference to your listeners, let me just share the backstory. It evolved. It emerged over time like anything in life, right? Um, yes, I signed up and got the Boy Scout merit badge as a kid. Yes, I went to Toastmasters. Yes, I did Dale Carnegie public speaking in my, in my past life. But the last recession, you know, face slammed me yeah. and my little startup nonprofit into the pavement. And I licked my wounds and made my way home. Home happened to be a two street light town in Kentucky with two institutions. One was Asbury, the college. And on the other side was Asbury, the seminary. 
And I ended up doing what a lot of folks do, which is recalibrating uh, in graduate school. And I wanted to do two things. I, I didn't want to become a, uh, a pastor in a pulpit, although that's what traditionally you do in seminary. I wanted to deep dive into a research track. And the research track had two interests, one of which was TED. Why were these talks so explosively popular, ideas worth spreading? Mm -hmm. And what did that secular church of ideas, TED, I describe as the secular church of ideas, yeah. what did that what did that institution have to do with the the Billy Grahams of uh, broadcast and preaching? Because Ted really felt like it was introducing life-changing ideas. And I felt that uh, those TED Talks shared something in common with some of the most life-changing sermons or messages that we would hear on Sunday. And we're better to unpack that and deconstruct it than in a homiletics program, which is the fancy word for preaching. Yeah, no kidding. So I'm in graduate school, eventually – zoning in on why TED Talks do what they do. And I met a older, wiser guy, literally someone who had been on Billy Graham's team. And Lyman, if you picture an 80-year-old with a ever-twinkling eye and you know the white beard, guided me to an understanding of where the overlaps were between what Billy Graham and the others of that age did for audiences and what he saw Ted doing. And then we began digging into the research, the neuroscience and the social science that undergirds the aha set that explains what Ted was doing that had worked for a hundred years, but also how Ted was responding to an emerging paradigm shift. And that was of course, social media, mm -hmm. YouTube and the internet. So it's uh you 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 had the opportunity the good fortune to truly study this and to come up with a recipe for what it takes is that right In an academic setting with academic discipline and boy did that ever make I think all the difference So the story continues I you know I I volunteer for a TEDx event here I compare and contrast TED events with non-TED events that also have countdown clocks, because remember those 18 minutes yeah. um, are tied to a countdown clock for the speaker. Well, there was a, and, and still is a very popular conference in the Christian context called Q, Question. And they employed a countdown clock and some other factors that looked very TED styled, very dramatic lighting and multiple camera angles. And the speaker looked like a rock star or a movie star on stage from whatever angle. But their views were in the thousands. Why? Contrast a thousand views with a hundred thousand views, a million view talk. And that compare and contrast that was Q conference and TED and TED and another one called the Idea Festival in Louisville, Kentucky, left me with some differentiators that we ended up building the training curriculum around. Oh, my goodness. I am salivating. I cannot wait to hear what these differentiators are. I want to add here that you have worked with Harvard's Dr. Robert Waldinger for his breakaway TED Talk called What Makes a Good Life that is now 35 million plus views. You had a hand in that. Yes, it's it's one of the top 10 talks of all time, and it was the byproduct of this <laughs> seminary undertaking. We need to go to break. Let's get into what these elements are when we come back from break, because I need to know this. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston on the line with Devin D. Marks, TED style speaking coach and uh, a training program, which we'll talk about when we get back. We'll be right back. I'm Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. We help people in our community that most others have given up on. Please donate your unwanted electronics to Ransom Recycling. We teach life skills, job readiness, and job creation through our electronic recycling program. We take anything with a cord. Find us at RansomMinistries.com or you can call us at 251-751-0044. Human Resource Department spend countless hours on insurance billing mistakes 
Obamacare rules, and compliance. Employee benefits serve the purpose of recruiting, retaining, and rewarding employees. We can handle all of your benefit needs with cost-effective products, employee enrollments, and handle your HR issues. Benefit admin doesn't have to be complicated. My name is Michael Cowart Jr. of the Cowart Group, and we specialize in helping businesses with their employee benefit packages. Visit CowartAssociates.com. Devin Marks is the nation's leading TED-style speaking coach. His work with Harvard's Dr. Robert Waldinger has led to a TED Talk that is now 35 million, million plus views. That's amazing. And somebody like me who tries to sell presentations is just, man, I just want to know what the recipe is. So, uh, Devin. (laughs) <laughs> help me uh, help me figure this out. What you were coaching him, you're coaching others. It can't be only the topic. The topic's got to be good. There's got to be more to it than that. So I'm just going to let you go. What what do we need to know? Well, correct, Kim. You know, it's it's a number of factors, and some are magic pixie dust that you just have to hope show up. But it starts first and foremost with three disciplines. And these will sound very simple and straightforward, almost common knowledge, but they're uncommonly applied in a public speaking context. And those three ahas are, a TED Talk is different from any other talk you've heard or delivered before in that it is clearly focused in the TED style. Secondly, it's story wrapped, but again, here's the asterisk, in the TED style. And third, it's action igniting, again, asterisks, in the TED style. So many public speakers believe they're delivering clearly focused messages. The reality is we walk out of presentations, whether online or in person, too many times, and we really don't know what that talk was about, nor can we summarize it for someone else. And I think that's a talk that suffered from not being clearly focused. Um, story is how we share and communicate and spread ideas. We resonate as a culture with story. Too often, speakers think they're delivering a story that's going to produce that result, when in reality, they're sharing a flat illustration. It's an example. It's not sticky in the way that TED Talk stories are. And then third, This idea of a call to action, that's pretty common in the public speaking circuit, but the reality is a call to action in the TED style is very different and subtly different. So um, those are three of the factors. There are seven, actually, but we probably don't have time to go into all of them. But those are the three critical starting points. Is your message clearly focused, story wrapped, and action inspiring that lay the groundwork for a talk to – jump, if you will, to explode, to be shared beyond your family and friends. Yeah. So I I, I want to first acknowledge that you do acknowledge a little pixie dust helps, but the pixie dust uh, won't help unless you've got these three things that you've articulated and the four more that we don't have time for. But let's let's go to story real quick. My mind is racing. Sure. Story. Uh, I agree with you that we are a a a people, a, a species of storytellers. And I remember hearing speakers talk to other speakers back in the day saying that no, uh, no stories will ever uh, story is gone. People don't have the patience for it. They don't have the tolerance for it. Social media has shortened our attention span, et cetera. Um, and, and particularly if with a young audience, you're going to bore them to death with any story that's more than a minute long. And I remember thinking, I don't know that I believe that we are a creature of stories. And let's face it, Harry Potter books at the time were flying off the shelf at five, six, seven hundred pages long. So I think there is an appetite for a story. Tell me your approach to story, particularly in a 20 minute time frame, 18 minute time frame. So those examples you share totally apply, and so does the reality that when you and I were watching movies back in Star Wars days, maybe it was an hour, an hour, and 20, an hour and a half. Now they're going two and a half hours. So there's an appetite for a story. But again, a particular 
Ted styled type of story resonates so much stronger. So I like to talk around two points that are critical to story wrapping your message. And that's one, that the shape of the story be what I call challenge shaped. So there's a, uh, you know, every story has a beginning, middle, end, you hope. <laughs> but more to the point, there's a setup it gives you the context for what's about to happen. There's a problem that the character and the guide and the whoever face, and then there's a resolution. So set up uh, problem resolution. You'll recognize this as a student of story cam as Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. Yeah, and this is actually this is a Greek tragedy. They've been this sure. way forever. Sure. And we have leaned in around campfires, around auditoriums, around kitchen tables when stories follow this trajectory. Now, Joseph Campbell's uh, theory of story involves 12 steps, and certainly a two and a half hour movie um, could involve many, many overlapping uh, story hero journeys. But in the condensed, concentrated TED style, thinking of your challenge shaped story in terms of three factors, again, setup, problem, resolution, sets you ahead of most messages that we will hear online or in person. I mean, again, ask yourself, how many sermons have you walked out of? How many motivational speeches? How many keynotes? And just fill in the blank for other context of presentations where you really can't summarize or share what you just quote unquote learned. And often it's lack of focus, lack of story. Does the story require a flaw of the lead character? I think that's part of each Greek tragedy. That's part of the hero's journey is the re the realization of a flaw that causes the downfall of the hero. I think it, it can benefit. There are actually six shapes of story the researchers uh, share with us and that resonate and work in the TED context. The hero's journey with a flaw or a problem um, is certainly uh, one of the leading shapes of story, the challenge shape story. But um, vulnerability and a sense of authenticity and sharing more than you normally would be inclined to uh, about your lack of perfection is is really gravitating. Yeah, yeah. Vulnerability. I used to teach presentation skills, and we were always uh, we were always emphasizing to our students that vulnerability. Uh, trumps uh, an accurate speech all the time. To to show a little bit of the vulnerability is always going to cause the, the, the audience to lean in. We didn't focus much on story, which I think is so very important. Let me ask you this. Can you, can you in a TED style talk using the story that you've just described, can you deliver technical content or is this, this story only applicable for inspiration, for a, a story with a moral in it, or a story with a, uh, you know, that's causing a deep change in the listener versus a tactical change in the listener. Very much so. And, and actually, let's skip back to that first um, cornerstone or, or, you know, principle of this framework that's the TED style of delivery, clearly focused. Now, a clearly focused message zones in, hones in on one big idea. Can you, the whole point of your 40 minutes or 20 minutes or seven minute or 90 second presentation, because that's what a elevator pitch is, yeah, right? 90 yeah. seconds or so. Can it be clearly focused and share one big idea? And is that big idea clean and crisp and clear in its wording? Rarely is that clarity there. Secondly, the other TED best practice that applies to focus is what we call the rule of three. We only process, we really only think most efficiently in threes. We don't remember five, seven, and 11 points. We walk out of a presentation that's clearly focused with an understanding of two to three to four maybe at the max points. Mm -hmm. And we've been, we've been trained as a culture through generations to think this way. Three Little Pigs, yeah. Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. Friends, Romans, Countrymen. Yes, and right now in this season, Three Wise Men, yeah. right? So, so the rule of three is a powerful tool 
for introducing that content, those, those, that data sometimes, those arguments, that, that heft that you want to be wrapped in story, if that makes sense. Yeah. A clearly focused idea involves a big idea and a rule of three. And each of those three key points, like the big idea, are sculpted, clean, crisp, clear in their wording as well. Because the tighter the, the concept the more alliterative, the, t- the uh, more rhythmic that key point is, the more likely it's going to be retained. Yeah. So uh, uh, could I give you a quick example of a client I've worked with who counterintuitively did not get a million views, but a million views is not success in TED all the time. What this young man wanted was a seat at the table, public policy table. He was an Iraq and Afghan vet. And he came back to the U.S. with an understanding that what we lack as a culture is a a spirit of service and sacrifice to our fellow man, right? And whether you agree or disagree, his call was for a national service policy. Give a year of yourself to the military or to the Peace Corps, your call, but serve our nation, And that could be a doorway to citizenship is how he described it. How did he describe that big idea? It was a three word big idea, national service now. Now, Joe, actually, uh, his last name will will pique your interest. His mother is a internationally bestseller of leadership and presidential history. Joe Kearns Goodwin's Hmm. call to national service involved three key points. And each of those key points undergirded that big idea and pushed it forward alone, much less in concert with the other two key mm-hmm. points. So the three key points were prepare to serve, go serve, come back, answer the call. And then after you return from the theater, call to others to national service now. Do you see how that those three points had a had an argument that moved the big idea forward? Yeah. And then, of course, each of those key points had an evidence set in an argument that was research based, that was story based, that, um, you know, had illustrations that people could get their brain around um, to undergird that key point. And the result, I mean, we need to go to break here. The result, sure. he wanted a key, he wanted a seat at the table. He prepared this dialogue, this uh, this presentation, and we got to hear this. Yeah, this TEDx event. Here's a young man who's not impressed by a million views. He wanted a seat at the public policy table. General Stanley McChrystal's organization reached out to him. The Aspen Institute, which is another thought yeah. leading yeah. conference and organization highlighted his big idea. And within uh, a few weeks, he had organized a nonprofit and was at that table helping guide policy around national service for a presidential candidate. When we come back from break, let's talk about the practical application of these TED Talk ideas, not the ideas, but the delivery of the content which you coach people on and how it can help my listeners as they interact on a Zoom call, as they interact with their team, as they have to get up and give a a thank you presentation at their kids volleyball season year end thing, which is kind of in my lap right now. So let's get back and taking this out of the million and 35 million views and into our lives on a daily basis. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston on the line with Devin Marks. We'll be right back. This is Cam Marston, host of What's Working. Jim Mitchell and his team at Signorama have provided all types of signage for nearly every event I've been a part of for years. I know his team's creativity, their multitude of products, and how easy they are to work with. His no mistake, Signorama is South Alabama's marketplace leader. Find Signorama on Facebook, call 6340100, or visit next to Mullinex Ford on Airport Boulevard. Think about your home. What do you see? Do you just see two stories or the stories of your toddler's first steps? Now think about your car. Do you see an odometer reading or your kids reading in the back seat? Other insurance companies just see a house. They just see a car. 
but a State Farm agent sees what your home and your car really mean to you. So why not give them the protection they deserve? You can reach me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, at allisonhorner.com. Devin Marks is the co-founder of the messaging and story training firm Hutchison Marks & Company, award-winning international team Six Cities. Clients hail from Southwest Airlines, Texas Instruments, Harvard Medical School, Girl Scouts of Greater L.A. He works with VIP celebrities, CEOs, etc. to help them better form and deliver their ideas wherever it is that they may be. He is able to got he's got a training program called Connect to Compel. And Devin, I definitely want to get into that in this segment here. Uh, first, how are you working with let's I'm using air quotes here, normal people to use these really, I, I want to say groundbreaking ideas. These are these are historically proven ideas uh, on so that you could help them on a daily basis. Well, thank you uh, for pointing out that, yes, I don't work with celebrities and CEOs all the time. That's part of the mix. But regularly, my team is assigned a slate of speakers for a national conference. Right now, I'm working with a uh, engineering conference uh, of 17 odd speakers that are all going to be delivering on screen, mind you, in a Zoom context, but in the TED best practices that we've been touching on. Yeah. So are they submitting their written speeches written to you? Are you watching their drafts? How how do you work with them in a uh, remote way? Well, it's a systemized process that usually takes 90 days. Um, We we go from pre-idea to center stage over roughly a three-month period. Sometimes it's six months and sometimes it's more compressed. Keep in mind, those clients are not delivering TED Talks. They're delivering in the TED style. Right at an engineering conference. And many of them are deans of engineering schools or professors. And so they're very accomplished presenters in an academic or a conference setting. But to a man and woman, they are learning new skills that's transforming the way they share ideas and ideas in particular that are worth spreading. And that again is tied to these three principles. Is their message, regardless of the length, regardless of the audience and context, clearly focused as we were talking around a big idea and a rule of three. Secondly, is is that message story wrapped? Are those ideas wrapped in story? And yes, we talked about a story being challenge shaped. You also mentioned that it needs to be relatable. There's got to be enough granular detail in that story, textured input, if you will, that allows the audience to go, oh, yeah, I was sweating like that, digging a ditch when I was 17. And like him, I learned. And then thirdly, and this is the principle we haven't touched on yet, but is so tied to your question about, hey, where's the meat here beyond story? Is that message action igniting? Yeah. So go on with action igniting. Let's get into number three. Well, action igniting is a call to action, which we hear regularly in conference uh, in Zoom presentations, but a certain kind works extremely well and others don't. Boil the ocean calls to action. People can't get their brains around. They don't know what to do next. Let's go back to my seminary training. And what we hear is a highly polished pastor share a focused message that's story wrapped and what they call an application. What is the application for my congregation on Wednesday this week? Not in a year, not in a month, but this week walking out of the Sunday sermon. And in a TED context, the, the question is, are the calls to action winnable wins? As in small steps that lead to maybe boiling the ocean or cleaning the ocean of plastic or saving the whales, but steps that are small enough that lead in that direction, and that also are replicable, that other folks can go, ooh, I could take those baby steps as well in the direction of that big idea. Mm -hmm. You want me to kind of ground this in some practical 
a practical illustration? I hate practical illustration. It absolutely <laughs> infuriates me. The last thing I want to know is practical illustration of grand idea. To answer your question Wait, sarcastically, yes, please, practical application. <laughs> So you mentioned Dr. Robert Waldinger's uh, breakaway TED Talk, um, 30 odd million views. Why did that explode the way it did? There are a number of factors. I can't take credit for that, although Dr. Waldinger is very generous in his uh, uh, thanks. Um, Dr. Waldinger is a published, uh, a, a polished speaker, number one, um, a polished academic speaker, used to lectures in an academic setting. But what he understood was that people, don't make massive change in their lives. They make small step change. And so as we were shaping his talk about happiness in the lives of men and families, he heads up a research uh, study at Harvard that has been running 75 years. He's the fourth director of this study, but it explores what really matters towards the lives of men that live a long time, that are mentally engaged and healthy, that have loving healthy family relationships that, you know, what is, what is the success formula? And it, it comes down to one big idea, three key points. And let's talk about the walk away call to action. He said, replace screen time with people time. Now, is that a winnable win? Could you do that on Tuesday? Yes. Yeah. Could you share that insight with somebody else because of the story, because of the focus of that message and they could apply it? Yes. Do something together, long walks or date nights. And then finally, reach out to that family member who you haven't spoken to in years and bridge that painful rift. Now, those are three winnable wins, replicable wins that if applied again and again and again, could turn into habits that do transform your life, your relationship, your family, your community, and even more. Small things that anyone can envision themselves doing and that they can talk about easily, like you said, and, 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 and relate, here's what the speaker said. And in so talking about it, they motivate themselves again by reliving that presentation. I think there's, there's gold in them, their hills, as they say. That's a... Uh, now, I'm curious if a, if a Dr. Waldinger or any of the others you've worked with are a little bit uh, proud of their content and they don't like somebody who's, let's say, not an engineer to come in and start tinkering with their message. Are most of these people volunteers to your information or are they prisoners being required to go through it? Uh, OK, so in the TED context, um, folks volunteer to be speakers uh, for a TEDx or a TED event. They're actually not compensated. No, I they're know. there because they want that idea yeah. to spread. Um, now, others are, uh, you know, speakers that come to us because they want to deliver in the TED style, but maybe for a national conference, maybe for a high stakes presentation. I worked with a uh, a uh, professor who, at a senior level in an administration at a university who was up for chancellor at a, another institution. And we worked together for four months to ensure that his final delivery and pitch to the hiring board, if you will, was clearly focused, story wrapped in action inspiring. So uh, we work with folks in a, a, a number of different contexts, but they all share in common a desire to spread the idea. So they're not being forced to. There's not a, a senior executive saying, listen, you you're, you got a lot of content, but you're just not spitting it out the right way in the public forum. I need you to go to this guy and let him train you up. These are volunteers who are coming to you because they recognize that they could be better. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've worked with the CEO of a, a large mutual fund here in Boston and he saw the merit in this, and we've discussed a number of times rolling out training for his leadership team. Well, yeah. I mean, they're assigned that, it may be. Even the marketing vice president might be assigned that. But the, the nifty thing is, when we begin a dialogue and they see the potency of what Ted can do for any message, that's a sales pitch, an elevator pitch, a team presentation, a board presentation, much less a summit or a keynote, when they see the potency of the TED model and its applicability. I mean, what we've talked about today is not rocket science and mysticism and something hard to get your brain around. 
when they see, oh, if I clearly focus my message in this TED way, I could have these results, story and action igniting. And you get pupil dilation and real excitement and buy-in 99% of the time. You're, is this something that requires your presence, whether through the video screen or in person, which isn't happening you know, these days? <laughs> Great question. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to say I was prescient when five years ago I signed up for Zoom and favored – uh, remote training of speakers yeah. around the country. Yeah. Instead of traveling to, we could we could train over the course of pre-recorded content and live coaching interactions. The the process that would move somebody from pre-idea to center stage. Well, I mean, now here we are, and I used to have to train people on how to download Zoom, much right, less use right. it. Now it's it's a blessing. Um, so no, uh, we do we do on site when it's we will do on site when it's safe again. But uh, the majority of the training is online learning and accented with coaching. So the Connect to Compel training program that I see here written out is a, a subscription based idea. Yeah, let me um, speak to that. And thanks for uh, bringing it up. I'm really excited about this new training that actually distills the best practices of TED presentations for a Zoom leadership context. Here we go. Now, by that, I mean not a Zoom participant and not a I have 11 Zoom sessions today with peers or subordinates or whatnot, my wife, for example, goes 11 to 17 back to back to back to back to back Zooms a day. Right. Those are not high stakes Zoom leadership opportunities. But every now and again, she needs to present to a board member. Every now and again, she's a recruiter. So she's hiring a C-level uh, applicant. Those are high stakes. And those are opportunities to ask yourself, is my message clearly focused story wrapped in action igniting? Is there clarity in what I'm asking of my audience of one or 100 or a thousand? Yeah, I, I can sense the significance of it in the right context. I think if, uh, if you were doing this every day, all day long, you would get weary. And I think if you had direct reports or something like that, who are constantly on the calls with you, they'd go, oh, here he goes again. Here we go. Another story <laughs> in three points. Right, That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. They would begin to call your bluff going, all right, we've seen this over and over again. But what we what we find out over and over again is whether a speaker or a Zoom leadership opportunity, what we find again and again is filtering your content through this metric through these tests, is it clearly focused? Is it story wrapped? Is it action igniting? Forces out a lot of the ancillary extra flab in a presentation that we tend to just build in there. Yeah. And it allows the speaker, the presenter to focus on what really matters most. Now, do they break the story rule? Sure, there are six other forms of story. Do they break the rule of three? Sure, there are exceptions to the rule. An acronym, for example, is a great way to break the rule of three. So there's a range of variety, but this, this framework forces a presenter to ask what really matters and what is, what is the story I want my viewers to tell after I've presented yeah. because they inevitably will be sharing a second generation story. Yeah. Anticipate that. Good one. I, I am not familiar, and there are certainly people who know more about this than me, but I'm not familiar with a leader that was not a good speaker and a leader that was not a good storyteller. I, I think it's it's critical and key to positions of leadership to be able to present and to tell stories well. And it doesn't mean you got to be the, the loudest one at the party. It means your stories True. need to be insightful and compelling. Where can people find out more? Well, I'd invite your uh, listeners to visit connect to compel now.com. And actually there's a, a, a resource of a learning tool that I'd love to allow them to access. It's uh, the three insights that we've been talking about yeah. for captivating your online viewers. And what's great is it'll dive deeper into these three principles, but also pair that content with examples from the TED stage. And uh, so they will find that at Connect to compel now.com. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. 
Folks, if you can see yourself benefiting from this content, I encourage you to check this out. This has been revealing to me, and I will tell you, I have given hundreds of presentations, if not thousands, over the past 20 years and realized I've left a lot of meat on the bone. The the efficacy that I've left behind, um, I'm kind of compelled to do this myself and to take a good, long, hard look at what it is I think I'm doing for myself and my audiences. Devin, thank you so much. This has been fascinating. Oh, Ken, this has been a delight and uh, a wonderful interlude in the in the week and in this season that we find ourselves in. Uh, so thanks so much for inviting me down south uh, to get to know the folks in Mobile. I, I'm pleased to have you. Thank you very much, folks. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. We'll be back with final comments after this break. <laughs> Do you sometimes wonder about different money topics, but struggle to find the answers? The Every Dollar Counts podcast with Gulf Coast experts Josh Knoll and Jay Stubbs is made for those folks serious about their financial plan and looking for answers. Josh and Jay dedicate their time to explaining the various services and products available, as well as discussing lifestyle and money interests of the modern day family. Tune in to Every Dollar Counts on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else you get your favorite podcasts. The best, most cost-efficient ways to talk to customers about who you are and what you do is through signs, simple, effective signs. Hi, I'm Cam Marston, host of What's Working. Signorama is the Mobile Area's leader in helping you design and build signs advertising your business. What kinds? All kinds of signs. All kinds. Find Signorama on Facebook or at signorama-mobile.com. Hi, I'm Cam Marston, host of What's Working. My carrier Infinity system is quiet, energy efficient, and runs like a dream. To keep it running smoothly, I rely on a maintenance plan from Keith Air Conditioning. With a Keith maintenance plan, your home or business receives discounts and 24-7 priority service. Give Keith Air Conditioning a call today at 251-476-3610 or visit keithair.com. Keith and Carrier, turn to the experts. Well, that was good. I mean, that was really good. He got my mind racing on on different ways of applying this. Goodness knows each of us communicates regularly. How about we put some structure, some thought into this, whether it be the important Zoom call we've got coming up or uh, the conversation we've got going on around the dinner table. I think the application here is nearly limitless. And I can't wait to try to sit down and figure out how to utilize this content in ways that I hadn't considered before. And I think there's some irony here, some humor in uh, us saying things like it's different this time. In other words, story doesn't work anymore. And the repetition of three doesn't work anymore. And something like that. The hero's journey doesn't work anymore. This is timeless stuff. And it's been put back in front of us uh, very clearly uh, with the opportunity to do something with it. Let's do something with it. That's all we got this week. I let Devin go on because I was fascinating by his content. I had hoped to drop in a commentary. Uh, That's not going to happen. We'll put it in for next week. Uh, Find us on Instagram, folks. Find Cam Marston on Instagram. We talk about the show there as well as on Facebook. Find the podcast at whatsworkingcam.com. John Thompson is the show's producer. Have a good week, everybody. (laughs) 